Now I've just had to shell out for a new kettle because my old one was arcing and fizzing when I got home even though it wasn't switched on. So this is your typical kettle you'll find in most uh, households, particularly in Britain and other parts of the world. Runs on 240, like everything in this country. It's a, this one's a swan. Um, so it's uh, 240 volts, 50 hertz, 3000 watts. Which is pretty normal. So, this uh, switch is uh, broken because I've already had it apart. I'm going to take it apart and show you what's inside and see if we can see where it was arcing. So let's have a go. So that's the uh, connector to the bottom. I'm assuming the outer is probably earth. Then you'd have neutral and live. Um, it looks like three screws to get the bottom off. Phillips. Phillips. Evil. But that's not going to stop me. They didn't design these uh, tri-wing screws very well because a fairly standard flathead screwdriver can quite easily just get in there and... ...and do that without any problem. And yes, I don't use that for testing the mains before anyone asks. Neon lamp there. These are the wires that go to the element. We have our switching mechanism which is broken. And uh, what happened is this little bit of plastic came off it when I took it apart. And that would normally push down a little plunger thingy here. So let's take this mechanism apart and see if we can see where it was like. It looks like it's being held in by three screws. One there, one there, and one there. So I'll just undo those quickly. And these wires are just on spade terminals, so they should just pull off. These go to the element which is inside this. So there's your three kilowatt element. And all that does is it heats up this plate at the bottom where the water is. So there doesn't seem to be any water in the bottom of this, so I don't think it's water that caused the problem. So this switch mechanism contains a, a bimetallic switch when when it gets hot enough it uh, clicks and turns off the turns off the power to the element so there's I think this is for a thermal overload and this is a little pipe that comes from inside the kettle there it's got a little hole in it somewhere but uh, I think when the steam comes through that, it heats up this because there's a little rubber pipe and goes in through that. That changes and pushes up the switch to, to switch the kettle off. Unfortunately, I can't get the switch to operate because of that bit of broken plastic. I'll just knock the rubber tube off. I'll see if I can get it to operate. So unfortunately, the mechanism is quite badly damaged. So. Uh, what normally happens is you push the switch down and push this down, which would latch in place, which pushes these contacts together with making the circuit to the element um, from the input there. And then when this gets hot, it springs up, it changes shape, pushes this back up, and then switches the kettle off. Fairly simple. It's been kettles have been working like that for a very very long time. Okay, I have to be a bit brutal to get this off. Um, these, I'm pretty sure, are something to do with thermal protection, overheat protection. I'm pretty sure when they uh, change, these uh, change shape when they get hot. And the way this works, this is the socket. So they've got the center pin and the middle ring. This is live and neutral. And there's these two copper tabs that go over to either side. And I think there's a piece missing. In fact, the other one's just fallen out as well. Not great. 
there was a little there it is a little white pin there's one of these on each side that goes in there like that and then the switch was active when the switch was deactivated these two white pins were pushed down and it broke this contact here so you can see if I push this pin down that contact moves away and that pushes it off if I let go it's on and there's one of these on each side so I think they were arcing somewhere around here so let's see if I can bend these out and see if there's any like, uh, signs of arcing let's have a look so you can see quite clearly here this is the top side of the contacts that would have been making contacts with these these uh, terminals here which go to the element um, that side's got some scorching this side's uh, quite a bit worse it's clearly gotten very hot um, over time and uh, yeah it's uh, blackened the copper there so you can see I've got thermal grease all over my hands now I'm gonna have to wash my hands but uh, yeah, so that's the failure mode there. There was a the the contacts weren't breaking properly. It was an arc forming. Thankfully, um, I don't know how long it was going for because I came home and it was already like it. I could hear it very loudly. Um, uh, so sort of just I instantly unplugged it. Um, even when I uh, flicked the switch a couple of times, plugged it back in, um, it was still arcing. So I decided to discontinue use because uh, anything that's arcing like that's a fire risk. So. I'll dig out the new one. But, uh, thankfully, these aren't too expensive. They're, I pay twenty pounds for that. It's probably about thirty dollars uh, US. So they're not expensive. So, and uh, that one comes with a three-year warranty. So happy days. I have gained one slightly useful thing. It's a small neon lamp, which uh, was wired directly across the element, and it's even got the. Uh, appropriate resistor in line inside the heat shrink there so that might come in useful for something and the other thing I will keep is the uh, fuse which is in there that's brown which means 13 amp so there you go one 13 amp fuse as well